Who's up for another translation challenge? Great! Today I'm going to try to translate the first two paragraphs of the first proper chapter of Cronache del Mondo Emerso by Licia Troisi, which I read last year. There is actually an official English translation, but it's only available in paperback as far as I can see, and not available in the UK on Amazon at the moment, so I have nothing to compare this with. For those who are thinking about trying to read some Italian literature, this is a fantasy book. I would say it would be under young adult in terms of English categories, and it has a female protagonist, but there are plenty of male characters too. Apart from getting used to the specific fantasy vocabulary, I don't think it's that difficult to read. But only read it if you like fantasy. You should always read the types of books that you enjoy. Just know that some of the creatures aren't actually translatable. And don't do as I did. Look multiple times to see if you can find out what something is. Let's get started. So these are those first two paragraphs of the chapter. I don't think they are that difficult in terms of vocabulary. They introduce the main character, Nihal, and pack quite a lot about her world into a very small space. That might be a pun. So first I'm going to put my initial rough translation of each block. Then I'll look at creating a more polished version. Il sole inundava la pianura. Era un autunno particolarmente clemente. L'erba era ancora d'un verde vivido e ondeggiava contro le mura della città, come un mare in bonaccia. The sun flooded across the plains. It was a particularly clement autumn. The grass was still bright green and swayed gently against the city walls like a calm sea. Sul terrazzo in cima alla torre, Nihal si godeva il vento mattutino, Era il posto più elevato di tutta Salazar. Da lì si godeva la vista migliore sulla piana, che si srotolava per leghe e leghe a perdita d'occhio. On the terrace at the top of the tower, Nihal was enjoying the morning wind. It was the highest spot in all of Salazar. From there you could enjoy the best view of the plains that rolled out for leagues upon leagues until lost from sight. Su quella distesa sconfinata, la città spiccava imponente, con i suoi cinquanta piani di case, botteghe e stalle. Una unica immense torre che conteneva una piccola metropoli di quindicimila persone, stipate nelle sue mille duecento braccia d'altezza. On that boundless expanse, the city stood imposingly with its fifty floors of houses, shops and stables. One huge tower that contained a small metropolis of 15,000 people, crammed into its 1,200 arms in height. OK, so some of this is quite clumsy in English, although you can probably understand what it's saying. And if you were reading this book, this would be enough of a mental translation for you to understand what you were reading but we can do better than this. The sun flooded across the plains. So, the Italian says plain, but in English we usually put it into the plural, even if it's just one plane we're looking at. I don't think this sentence needs more. It says what it needs to. But I think I'm going to remove a cross. Just the sun flooded the plains, as that's closer to the original. I could change it to was flooding, which is more literal, but passive voice is frowned upon in English literature these days, so I'm leaving that as it is. It was a particularly clement autumn. The grass was still bright and green and swayed gently against the city walls like a calm sea. A clement autumn. We use inclement quite a lot in English for the weather, but not really clement. However, I'm going to leave it here because fantasy books often use what might be thought to be outdated language, and that's what this sounds like in English. I'm going to change what the grass is, though, and say a vibrant green, because bright or vivid doesn't work for me. The verb here, ondeggiare, is to sway, wave or rock. 
but if something is like a calm sea, swaying doesn't seem quite right. So I think I'm going to plump for lapped instead. It goes with the image of the sea, but does sound a little unusual. Maybe adding in something like seemed to would be a good choice, but I'm still going to leave it as is. On the terrace at the top of the tower, Michal was enjoying the morning wind. It was the high spot in all of Salazar. From there, you could enjoy the best view of the plains that rolled out for leagues upon leagues until lost from sight. Michal was enjoying the morning wind sounds weird without more detail, like she liked the way it pushed her hair back from her face. I think breeze would be better because generally that's more enjoyable. We've got enjoy twice though, so I'm going to look up other meanings of godere to see if I can change it up a bit. That gives me be delighted, take delight, please. Take delight synonyms I get are admire, appreciate, revel in, savour, relish. Now we have a few options. I think I might take relish and use it to replace the first enjoy. It might be a bit much, but I like it. The planes rolled out sounds a bit weird to me in English. I think spread out would be the right choice here. We talk about vistas spreading out before us. I'm also wondering if unfolded might work, but I'm still going for spread. OK, disappeared from sight is better than lost in English, and we'd usually say disappeared into the distance. So until they disappeared into the distance. Or disappearing into the distance. Yes, I think I like that better. On that boundless expanse, the city stood imposingly with its 50 floors of houses, shops and stables. One huge tower that contained a small metropolis of 15,000 people crammed into its 1,200 arms in height. OK, this last part is perfectly understandable, but I don't think it works well in this order in English, so I'm going to change it around. The city stood, imposingly, on that boundless expanse, with its 50 floors of houses, shops and stables. One huge tower, 1,200 arms high, crammed full with a small metropolis of 15,000 people. OK, done. I just have to say I do love these first two paragraphs and how you immediately have such a vivid image of how this community lives. Personally, I think this kind of thing is a really good, fun exercise, much better than translating a paragraph from a textbook. But if you're reading a book in your foreign language of choice, you don't have to know it in this much detail. You can't look up every single word as you're reading. Well, you can, but it would take you forever to get anywhere. Now, I wonder what else I might translate. A presto. Ciao.